Donald Trump has now called on Russia to dig up dirt and release information that could be damaging to Hunter Biden and potentially his father, Joe Biden. Now he did this in the context of an interview. Let me set up the context before we get to that video. Trump reiterated his unproven claim that Elena Baturina, a Russian oligarch and the wife of former Moscow mayor Yuri Luskov, gave $3.5 million to a business that Hunter Biden helped found. So he was the co-founder of a company, an investment firm. It's known as the Rosemont Seneca, Rosemont Seneca Advisors. And so here is the allegation that Trump made, but more importantly, here's who he's looking for help from. Why did the mayor of Moscow's wife give the Bidens, both of them, Three and a half million dollars for him. That's a lot of money. She gave him three and a half million dollars. So now I would think Putin would know the answer to that. I think he should release it. I think we should know that answer. Now, uh, let me just note that even in that statement, Trump couldn't get his facts straight. The the person that he's referring to is the wife of a former mayor uh, in in Russia, uh, and but it doesn't matter. The facts don't matter, and I'll I'll get into the details about the allegations in a little bit. But before I do it. Obviously, this is reminiscent of what Trump did back in 2016 when he was urging the Russians to assist him on something else. Let's watch that. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. And of course, let's not forget about the fact that Donald Trump withheld congressionally appropriated military funding for Ukraine back in 2019 in an effort to essentially hold it over the head of Vladimir Zelensky to get him to announce some sham investigation into the Bidens. Right, So he was holding that money hostage specifically to ensure that he could get the leader of Ukraine to announce some sham investigation to hurt his political opponent. This is what Trump does, this is who he is. and. He'll continue doing it because there's never really any consequences for it. Yeah, so we do news in a funny time, right? Because what Trump is doing is super obvious. He is asking Vladimir Putin, the butcher of Moscow, for help in the middle of him butchering Ukrainians. He's doing it right now. Putin invaded Ukraine. There's 5,000 civilians dead in Maripol alone. The other day, the Ukrainians did something really powerful where they put out a bunch of baby strollers for every baby that was killed or every child that was killed in that particular town. I mean, and Putin is doing all this for his ego, for empire, a war of aggression, a clear monster. And Trump doesn't care at all. Instead, he's obsessed still with Hunter Biden. And so he's asking Putin for help publicly. You just saw it, you saw it with your own eyes. And he said, oh man, if Putin could just release. And, and is it true, by the way? Of course not. It's another conspiracy theory. That's insanity. Remember, he held up the aid to Ukraine, which turned out to be very, very relevant based on another conspiracy theory that wasn't true either. So even if Zelensky wanted to help Trump in order to get the weapons to be able to uh, deter a Russian invasion, which he was not able to deter. Even if he wanted to, he couldn't because Trump had made up a Looney Tune thing that wasn't true. So you can't get evidence for a thing that isn't true. So look, that's why I say we're doing news at a funny time in American history because for anyone who's sane, all of that is not just obvious, it's on tape. You can see it with your own eyes. You can, If you have any degree of logic, you could see exactly what he's doing. But there's about 40% of the country that looks at that and thinks, no, that's my leader. And I say that because today a poll came out, he's in a theoretical matchup, he's beating Biden by eight points today. If the Doesn't the, surprise me. If the election were held today, Trump would win easily. Against Kamala Harris, he has an 11 point lead. So the country looks at this madman who's helping, trying to help a tyrant who's in the middle of butchering civilians and they go, yeah, we'd like him back. Yeah, look, it does, Jake, it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me because what we've seen from Biden domestically has not been great. 
right? So while we've been fair to Biden in regard to how he's handled the Russian invasion in Ukraine, which is not a difficult thing to handle, domestically speaking, it's been one excuse after the next, right? And remember, what really did Trump in? The reason why he was not reelected in 2020 was his handling of COVID. And I think that Biden really harmed himself by putting out that speech where he claimed, you know, as soon as we get people vaccinated, we'll be past it, COVID will be over, we'll be able to go to our family barbecues and enjoy ourselves. And clearly that didn't happen. Some schools are still grappling with this issue. You know, some schools are still doing distance learning and all of that. People are frustrated. At the same time, economically speaking, what has Biden given the American people that Donald Trump didn't? And I'm being honest here, okay? Donald Trump was awful. He, uh, the only real agenda item that he managed to get through was massive tax cuts for the rich to the tune of $2 trillion. Biden campaigned on reversing those tax cuts for the rich. The first thing he did though was propose legislation that did not reverse the Trump era tax cuts for the rich, that went halfway, knowing full well that he would get rejected by people like Senators Cinema and Manchin. And so, and then he uses that as an excuse. He hasn't applied any pressure to those senators. He hasn't any, done any um, hard work necessary to essentially make them bend to his will. He's the President of the United States. And to be quite honest with you, when you see someone like Manchin, you know, effectively serving as the President and Biden sitting back and letting it happen, what does that communicate to the American people? It communicates weakness, Yeah. period. So to, to your point, Anna, uh, foreign policy wins don't last that long in American politics. So George H.W. Bush after the first Gulf War had a 91% approval rating. Uh, he lost the next election and not that much later. And, and the reason is because domestic policy is much more important to the average American than foreign policy. Because it affects their actual lives, gas prices, their salaries, health care, etc. Right? So that matters a lot more. So the fact that Biden has done great on foreign policy, but miserable on domestic policy is not going to help his election chances. It's just a matter of simple political calculation. It doesn't mean he should do bad in foreign policy or ignore foreign policy. I'm thrilled that he did great in balancing interest in Ukraine, but he also has to do just as well in domestic policy. Otherwise, it's not gonna matter much. And on the Republican side, they are locked in. They're 200% locked into Trump or in a best case scenario, a Trump clone. Um, so Trump, the most accurate thing he ever said was, I could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and get away with it, and no one would care. It, his, for his followers, that is enormously true. So I'll give you an outrageous example, and then I'll prove that that example is true. If today, instead of saying, hey, I would like Putin's help in targeting Hunter Biden with a kooky conspiracy theory, he had said, I would like to make out with Vladimir Putin. Just like neck and give each other hickeys, etc. No Republican would care. He would not lose a single vote. Now you think, oh, come on, Jenk, you're being outrageous and that's hyperbolic. Think about it. He said that Kim Jong un and him fell in love and wrote love letters to one another. He didn't lose one vote over it. Kim Jong un is he's a still worse bragging tyrant. About it. Yeah, and he still bragged about it yesterday, the other day. We covered it on the show yesterday. And Kim Jong un is a worse dictator than Putin. And didn't lose a single Republican vote. He's Kim Jong Un is a communist dictator, and all Republicans are like, "Oh, you fell in love with a communist dictator? No problem. You still hate brown and black people? Great, we're it." So, those are the Republicans, and independents are very, very easily swayed. And Biden has not swayed them at all on domestic issues. That's why Trump can be brazenly, openly corrupt and ask the help of a tyrant. Uh, and he won't suffer any consequences. Also, let me just, I guess, give Republicans a word of advice. Uh, look, the Hunter Biden stuff, everything I've seen about it has been incredibly boring, okay? Like they, they're they latching onto Hunter Biden, they won't let go. They're putting out the conspiracy theories. Hey guys, you don't have to dig that deep for conspiracy theories, okay? If you're worried about nefarious funding taking place, all right, well, why don't you take a look at the money in politics that essentially rules our democratic system, right? Like that, that it's out in the open and they're deciding, no, let's make up some story about the wife of a former mayor in Russia who allegedly gave 
an investment firm that was co-founded by Hunter Biden, $3.5 million. We don't have any evidence of that really, and we don't know why that would be an issue for Joe Biden. But nonetheless, that's the big nefarious conspiracy theory. Okay, I mean, there's all sorts of nefarious funding, dark money pouring into campaigns for both Democrats and Republicans in our Congress on a regular basis. And, and, and it just, it amazes me that they decide to ignore that and focus on Hunter freaking Biden. I got news for you guys, Hunter Biden's not president. No one cares about Hunter Biden. Why don't you focus about uh, focus on the greed and the legalized bribery that rules politics in America today? But I guess that's a little too boring for them since it's out in the open. Look, I can prove it definitively uh, for the right wingers that their leaders and their commentators are corrupt. Uh, and they might even understand this. Look, guys, we call out our own side all the time. Pelosi's raised like a billion dollars. What is that? That's like a billion dollars in bribes. They're not giving that money for their health. They're doing it for political advantage, those donors. And do they control Pelosi and Biden and Schumer? Of course they do. We're honest about our side. And it would be so easy to attack Democrats on that. But the reason why your Tucker Carlson's and all of your political leaders and all of your right wing commentators do not do that is because they are equally corrupt. It's the most obvious thing in the world. Why don't you ask them, hey, why don't you call out corruption? Forget the Republican side. I know you think that they're all angels. Right, Donald Trump is your savior, your lord, and your you know whatever he is to you. Okay, so don't touch him. He's poor, poor feelings. I know he's very thin skin. So I'm. Why don't you ask all of your commentators why aren't you attacking Democrats on the obvious bribes that they take from corporate interests? Oh, you're not talking about it because then you would have to expose Republicans who take the same exact. Bribes, including your beloved Donald Trump, who's one of the biggest crooks there is. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.